So, you want to play emulator games online with friends. Uh, you got a couple options. There are some web-based, web RTC type things. They don't work very well. Um, Netplay in general, even the, uh, the emulation wiki admits, it sucks. So I'm going to briefly go over the steps of what you've got to do to try uh, basically using NVIDIA's game stream in order to facilitate uh, multiplayer with your friend. First thing you're going to want to do is open up your uh, NVIDIA GeForce Experience. You'll probably find it in here. NVIDIA, hey, GeForce Experience. If you don't have it, go out on the internet and download it. It's free. It's not going to infect your computer with anything. In fact, if anything, it's going to make things run better. So with GeForce Experience open, you're probably going to get a window like this. Click the gear icon, click the shield icon, and be sure to turn it on. The next thing you're going to want to do is go to add. You're going to uh, go to, uh, according to, um, according to a certain setup guide, which I'll show you later, uh, you're going to go to add, and you're going to uh, go to C, Windows, System32, MST, SC.exe. You're going to do that, and you're going to click open. I've already done this, so I'm not going to do it again. Um, but that will uh, allow it. I've got one here called Desktop, and it basically will create this. That's the target. Start in here. I chose to name it Desktop just for just for grins. So that's what that is now, that, and now it appears here as Desktop. So that's all you're going to do here in the GeForce Experience app. The way you're going to get this all to work is your friend is going to, you're going to create a VPN for yourself to keep yourself protected. It's free. Don't worry. It doesn't cost you a thing, just your time. And your friend is going to download a client called Moonlight. Normally, the only way anybody can use NVIDIA to connect to your PC is through a shield device. But with Moonlight, they can bypass that restriction. Uh, Moonlight runs on damn near anything. Look under client. There's tons of, tons of things. So your friend's going to download Moonlight. And uh, also under Moonlight, they have a little setup guide, which has lots of useful information in it. Um, the first thing they tell you to do is get this thing called Zero Tier. That's the VPN. Uh, it's not really a VPN, but it's something similar. So here we are at Zero Tier. I'm going to come over here to Global Area Networking. Um, this is the link that they take you to. I want to log in. Sure, great. I've logged in. Um, go to Networks. Add a network or create a network, and it'll generate this network here. If you want to delete that network, it's all the way at the bottom, just for reference. You may need to do that. It's a nuclear option. If you find your this friend of yours is not the friend you thought he was, you could totally delete the network, and it'll never connect to you again. Generates a network. Um, the other part of the setup guide is right in here, part four, where it tells you to what check boxes to check and uncheck, blah blah blah, that kind of stuff. That's all right here. Tick auto assign, tick easy, tick this 10.147.17 asterisk, and over here in IPv6, uncheck everything, and uh, you're done with, uh, with that. Um, next, you're going to need to click download in zero, you, the host, and your friend are both going to have to click download. And here under the download section, download your Microsoft Windows installer, um, install it, and on both of your PCs, it's going to put this brand new weird looking... Uh, icon here. Right click it, tell it to uh, click join network, and type in this network ID of the network you want to join. It pops up this little box here. Just type that in, click join, you're ready to go. Um, hosts. The host is going to have to come in here and, uh, and acknowledge which one of you is which. Um, if you forget which computer you are, you can always right click. Here's your node ID right there, 90791. 90791, yep, that's me right there. Authorize me, authorize your friend when they connect, um, and then uh, give your friend this IP address. This is the IP address given to you by Zero Tier. This kind of also helps hide you and keep you secure in case your friend turns out to be toxic. Of course, you know, friends are great. Friends can be great people. Friends can be have you know. You might wind up being able to actually trust that person. But I'm just saying. Safety first here, people. You don't know. The internet is a very scary place. So you give them that IP address. Meanwhile, over here, your friend has been uh, asking you for a, an IP address. They've downloaded Moonlight. They've downloaded Zero Tier. They've connected to your network. And they want to know, hey, uh, what, what IP address do I connect to? So you give it to them. That's the IP address we saw on the other page. They type that in or copy and paste it. Uh, click OK. And boom. That's my PC, all right. Then they're going to tell me enter 1232, um, just to prove that is, in fact, on my PC and not there. So 
Whoops, I hit the wrong button. I have to try that again. Okay, we're gonna try that. One, two, one, one. All right. Sweet. Now they can connect. Remember that desktop app I created earlier? There it is right there. They can now connect to that. Um, this unfortunately is not gonna be able to show anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize uh, Team Viewer. But um, I but I'm telling you that they can see everything that you can see. So now that they've connected, and I and I recommend that you have them connect first before you open RetroArch. Don't re open RetroArch first. You can re open RetroArch first. It just means that after they connect, their controller is going to impose itself as player one. So if you want them to be player one, fine, go do it that way. But I, if I'm the one running the show, it's probably easier if I'm controlling how this is all running. So here I've opened RetroArch. Uh, they're connected. I'm connected. I say we play uh, Super Street Fighter 2. Let's do it. Yeah, that's great. Uh, game start versus battle. Yikes. Sure, I'll I'll be E Honda, and I'll let the I'll let player two be Ken in this case. So here I am as Ken, and I'm playing player two in this case. This is all going through my friend's PC. This is what they're what they're able to do wirelessly. This is all happening wirelessly. Bluetooth controller to a laptop that's wirelessly connected to my PC in the main house. It's enough to allow me to do Hadoukens, Dragon Punches, whatever that weird kick is that I can't pronounce. It all works. I have enough, it, it, it has enough responsiveness to allow me to do anything. And meanwhile, on the number one player, here I am with, you know, it all works. Things are getting a little noisy, so I'm going to exit out of that. So I hope that helped. Um, if there's any other extra information you need, again, this setup guide is pretty helpful. Um, one of the things I tell you to download is the Moonlight Internet Hosting Tool. Um, what else did I forget? Um, I think that's everything um oh wait there is one more thing i did forget something um your friend might uh you might notice that on your pc there's no sound but your friend gets all the sound why is that what's going on um before your friend connects to you tell him to click that little gear icon at the top right over uh up over here be sure to click that gear icon and tell him to tick the box for play audio on host pc before he connects to you. Um, yes, I want to quit desktop. And now I'm going to shut down TeamViewer. So I don't need you up anymore. So that's all I got. Um, that's everything. The only caveat to this is that you can only have one other player with this method. You can't have multiple. But that's still a uh, far bit higher than uh, using um, emulators, Netplay, and some of these other solutions. So this is basically the end of the video, but I'm going to ramble on a little bit more about why Netplay doesn't actually work. So uh, you're free to you're free to quit and go on. Uh, you're free to quit and go about your business and try this out for yourself. Um, and or you can uh, or you can stick around for uh, for more added information. Um, looking at the reason why there are so many desyncs here in Netplay with emulators is because of the way that they work. Basically, the way Netplay actually works with emulators is they just share, comp they just share controller inputs. They don't actually uh, host one game that both people connect to and play on. There's no central server that keeps track of everything happening at once. It's just, nope, this person pressed that button, so that button gets pressed on your system now. It's, it's literally that. 
And this causes problems because essentially what you've got here is two people each running a copy of the emulator with a copy of the game. And games have randomness in them based on timing. And even then, that randomness can change depending on a multitude of factors. So the reason why things get desynchronized is because if any of these games randomness is uh, it creates a different result than what's on another person's piece than what's on another person's emulator then totally different things happen and now that person's button presses make no sense on your on your end and your button presses now no longer make sense on their end so it, it creates that problem plus I mean it takes several consecutive tries for the game to stay synced well enough to enjoy some don't be discouraged, just keep trying. I'm like, Jesus. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, D6 occur very often. It's choppy and stuttery. I don't recommend doing it that way. The reason that was given to me had something to do with this buzzword called uh, deterministic. Apparently, later emulators were designed to be deterministic. I've, I've been a programmer for over 10 years, and... I admit I have no idea what deterministic means, but I guess I guess in short it means that you can ensure that both systems are giving you the exact same result. But even then, there's nothing really ensuring that they that the results are in sync necessarily. Only that both of them have been given all the same data to recreate the same result twice. But all it takes is for one person's CPU to run just a little bit slower or a little lag spike to happen, and suddenly everything's all out of whack. So even with a deterministic system, I don't think that it's a good idea. I don't think it's going to work very well. Now, some of you are probably wondering, why did I have to go to the extra, um, extra bit of trouble of getting zero tier? Was all of this really necessary? Um, it's not necessary to get it running, no. Uh, Moonlight will work just fine if you gave them your actual IP address, um, they would be able to connect to your PC and they would be able to click on desktop and they would basically get remote desktop access to your PC. Um, the reason why that can be problematic is when you go to bed at night, they still have access to your PC. They can still connect and do stuff to you. Um, that's why I sought a solution like zero tier, like the setup guide told me to do, which allows me to say, Hey, you know, um, you know, hey, friend, hey, Luther Lunch Bucket, whatever the guy's name is, we'll call him Luther Lunch Bucket. Hey, Luther Lunch Bucket, you can join me, but after we're done playing, I'm going to deauthorize you because I don't need you to have any further access to my computer beyond that. And if he even decides to get, if he decides to get even more snippy and nasty about it, the IP address that he connected to isn't even a real IP address, technically speaking. It's not one that's recognized by the greater internet. It's only one that's recognized by zero tier. So if I revoke his access or even revoke my access or change my IP address to something else, he'll never connect to it again. He doesn't have my real IP. So this helps keep you extra, extra secured. Um, I guess that's it. I guess that's everything. The only... Th um. The only things you should expect with this solution is you need faster, I guess, internet. If you're going to do something over Wi-Fi, make sure it's at least 5G. Um, I'm using a laptop with this, using my 5G network. Granted, it's, it's over a LAN, so it's all connected within the same network, but still, it's a proof of concept that says, yes, you can connect to... Um, you can connect to somebody over a fast wireless network and have it actually work. Um, at worst, um, the only thing your friend connecting to you is going to see is the graphics might get glitched out a little bit, and that's the system trying to favor functionality over quality. So he'll still be able to play, and he'll still be able to keep going. It's just the picture will get really pixelated at times to make up for the internet loss or for the internet latency. Um, I mean, what's more important, your ability to continue playing the game or that it always looks pretty all the time? This technology is going to do nothing but improve over time anyway. But um, for now, I even this solution, technically speaking, is not perfect, but I still think it's better than the net play solution that's been presented before. 
And one last thing, um, this is not just limited to emulators. You don't actually have to do it with just emulators. Any local multiplayer game like, say, Human Fall Flat or Genital Jousting, we're not going to bring that up. That's not safe for YouTube. Um, but any local multiplayer game, or Cuphead, that was another one that was brought up to me. You know, you could play two-player Cuphead with something like this. Um, this would allow some, This would allow you and a friend to finally play Cuphead co-op without having to make all the logistical arrangements of arriving at each other's houses. Um, not all of our friends live in the same neighborhood as us. Some of our friends live very, very far away in separate time zones. So... This might be a way for you to enjoy uh, enjoy some good retro gaming or at least some good party gaming with some good friends of yours. I hope it works for you, and uh, I think that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I hope it helps.